Welcome to this prog story, the story about the greatest progressive concept album ever. Hi, my name is Johan Stensland, and this is chapter 3 out of 4 of this story. So if you haven't checked out the previous chapters, you might want to do that first. If you like progressive rock music and a good story, please sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Chapter 3 Looking back, I'm not sure of how long I was down after this tremendous blow to my ego, but I do remember the feeling of complete emptiness. Life felt meaningless, and that pride and those feelings of fulfillment I had been blessed by during the work on Crossfade were now replaced by darkness and hollowness. For some reason, I didn't hit rock bottom, even though I believe I was close. And yes, there were times when I thought it was over. That idea that I carried something unique inside me. Some voice, something that was my springboard into making something out of myself. But it turned out I was more resilient than I thought. Because even if life sometimes felt meaningless, there was this recurring word. It had started like a soft echo in the back of my mind, but it grew louder as days and weeks passed. Change. That was the word that kept coming back to me. Change. I understood that. After my life-shattering failure with my concept album Crossfade, change seemed to be inevitable. Okay, great. But what was it exactly that needed to change? And how? I was 25, and time seemed to be the other single most important word. I was not exactly young anymore. I couldn't afford to keep on getting immersed in this huge project that didn't lead anywhere. Before long, I would be 40, and life would pretty much be over, or... So I thought, but guess what? It came to me out of the blue. It was one of those epiphanies that possibly saved my sanity. I have no idea how these things happen, but I do know that I'm fortunate to have been blessed by these epiphanies that alter the trajectory of my life. I realized that change for me then and there could be translated into something that had previously been unthinkable. What this translation would read had so far for me been incompatible with true art and creation. But all of a sudden, it was the only way to go. The word was compromise. On the one hand, you had the commercial musical universe, where artists like Paula Abdul and Madonna flourished. On the other hand, you had the non-commercial music, where obscure artists tried to make ends meet. But everything wasn't black and white, was it? 
There were artists that balanced on the fine edge of what was considered pop and still retained a good portion of true and basic quality. There were the Stings, the Peter Gabriels and the Totos of pop. High quality stuff, but still commercially viable. Compromise. Simplify. Boom! This was one of the most powerful epiphanies of my life. It's no exaggeration that I, within a couple of months, had formed a new band and had written about 10 new songs for this project. Simplify and compromise. Said and done. Instead of just themes, parts and patterns, these new songs had verses and choruses. The lyrics were direct and in Swedish, which was also a first. And believe it or not, this new band actually had a bit of success. We became a thing around our city. People liked us and this kind of Swedish prog pop that we played. But here's the thing. None of us had any experience about the business side of music. And none of us had any management skills or just loved to be on the phone all day long. Remember, this was still way before the internet. And it doesn't matter how good or bad you are. Breaking as an artist has little to do with that. It's more to do with management, contacts, marketing, and so forth. I'm not saying we would have made it big had we had the right connections. I'm just saying that we didn't have the right connections and that we were unable to make them. Hence, no success. So I pulled the plug. Enough was enough. And this time, I was done. I had zero interest to pursue a career within music anymore. I was done. But that word that started to resonate within me after the failure of Crossfade, now it sang inside me. Change. So it was time. I couldn't delay this decision any longer. As a kid, I dropped out of compulsory school at the age of 14. I had a rough childhood and I just couldn't cope with school anymore. And since then, my musical projects had been all I lived and cared for. The problem was, I realized, that I believed that was all I as a human being had to offer. My self-esteem was one of the things that was taken from me as a kid. Now, at the age of 27, I made a decision that scared the hell out of me. I was going back to school. I was going to educate myself. I was going to try to make something out of myself, something that had nothing to do with my musicality. It was time to face the truth, no matter how ugly that truth might be. Was there more inside me? Did I have more to offer than just non-commercial music? Was there something else I could do? I realized that what I really needed to change was myself. I was shy, I had low self-esteem outside music, and I was largely uneducated. All that needed to change. Yes, this decision really scared the hell out of me, but I was ready. I had driven this music thing as far as it was gonna go. I was ready. And to my great surprise, I was a lot more successful within academia than I ever was within music. It turned out I had other talents. So here started a long and extremely rewarding journey. I eventually earned my PhD in scientific computing. I met my wife. And together we traveled the world as researchers. We had two beautiful kids and I devoted my spare time to endurance sports. This journey is the best part of my life because it has enriched me, transformed me 
and made me a person I can be proud of. What about music then? Well, during this long and amazing journey, I played very little. I did release one album, Do Them Slow Songs, which was well received, but that was it. I had discovered that I didn't have to make music to be someone or to get recognition or love. So I let it be for a while. 